All right, I finally got that done. That took forever. Um, I, I think I like it. Um, I was a little concerned it wouldn't look good, but I actually think I like the look of it stitched better. It'll definitely hold together better. But I tell you what, this just took forever. I would do, you know, a little bit, and then I would just stop, give it a break for a while. And I was killing my fingers and making my eyes go crossed, and, and I was using one of these. Um, I need to get some uh, some thimbles. I was using this to pull the needle in and out. But yeah, I can't tell you how happy I am that that is finally done. So now all I have to do is the other side. All right, so I gave it a break for about a day um, just to get my eyes and my fingers a rest. But I went ahead and started on the other side, got the first two stitches in, so only half a million left to go. Um, like I said before, I do like the look of the stitched side better than the unstitched side. I didn't think I would, but I do. It's not completely perfect. There's a couple of stitches that are a little bit crooked but um, you know if that would focus better. Um, but again, if you're gonna do this, uh, just make sure you start, come up and down in the same hole so they stay in a straight line. If you don't, then you'll get one that looks kinda of like, uh, one of those is kinda of crooked up here, but that's when I first started. And uh, as long as the spacing is the same and not too long, and I was using the natural weave of the fabric to set my spacing, you know, I'd go you know, every other ridge or whatever you call it. So just take your time, make it even, make it straight, and uh, it'll look fine. So um, hopefully I'll get this done. Like I said, I'll just do a little bit each day. And um, hopefully I'll get this done by this time next week. And then once that's done, we can start fitting it onto the, um, onto the car body. And uh, hopefully that goes well. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about that. I can see it going very poorly, but uh, we'll see. So far, things have been going okay, so uh, um, hopefully the rest of it will as well. So anyways, let me um, get back on this and uh, get back to you when this is done and ready for the next step. Okay, so finally, for real this time, the sewing is done. So there's the other side. I don't know why, but this side, this is the second side I did, it just did not want to cooperate. I mean, the first side I did, I had a few not so good stitches here, but once I kind of got into it, I kind of, it kind of went okay. This side just, it seemed like it took twice as long. I just felt more uncoordinated. It's like, you know, you spend your whole life learning how to write right-handed, and then all of a sudden you have to use your left hand. That's kind of what it felt like here. Uh, it just didn't want to go as well. Uh, but it's finally done. I think it looks okay enough. Um, I really don't think anybody is going to come back later and really scrutinize this thing, you know, using one of these. I mean, this is what I use to actually sew it. Um, to the naked eye, I think it looks fine. Uh, you magnify it 10 times and you can see the mistakes. So I think it's fine. So what I did now uh, with this mess, I've got the car back. Um, I installed the framework, um, and again, this is the one I had to remake right here, and um, it's screwed in each side here, so this is temporarily installed. The pieces that go here, let me just flip this up a bit, these pieces right here, they want to flex outward quite a bit, I'm not exactly sure why. So this tape this way is to try to pull those back in. And I really, I need to pull that one in a little bit more. So I might need to, uh, maybe if I just kind of, oh, I want that one. Retape this, pull that in a little bit further. Come on, like that. And this one is pulling the other one. This one is a little bit stronger. Uh, also, I temporarily installed the doors with the windows up just kind of taped in place. And I put in the windshield. I put tape here just to protect the paint. Uh, now, the metal part here that holds the windshield in, this piece right here, um, my tape's coming undone again. 
I might have to redo that. Um, the metal part that holds the windshield in, I think that's stamped out of steel. The bottom edge had some burrs on it. Um, now I put the tape on it to keep the paint from getting scratched, but I also sanded the burrs off so there wouldn't be any sharp edges to scratch the paint in the first place. But still, protect your paint. Uh, those are just in there. They're just little, I think they're just carbon fiber rod um, pins to put in there just to hold that in place and then clamped it down here at the front because I needed to know where this part landed. And then I taped that down here. Uh, the tape here is to keep the correct spacing of these three. Now on yours, you'll have plastic tabs here. Um, remember, this piece on mine broke, so I had to cut those plastic tabs off to put this one in. That tape is just there to hold the spacing. And so that's what it looks like so far. Um, so the next step, according to the directions, I'm supposed to go ahead and glue the fabric, or sorry, wrap the fabric around that edge here, and then take this and screw it up on the bottom side to hold it in. Problem is, if I put too much around, then I won't have enough to reach the back. So I want to test fit the fabric to make sure I have plenty of length. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put this down here. Now I kind of marked the center. Um, and I'm going to put that center mark on that first screw hole and I'm just going to tape that in place so it doesn't slip out. Again, just making sure that's lined up center and see if I can get that to kind of follow that curve a little bit. There's that screw hole right there. So like that, I'll just kind of tape that in place. Now I'm also I'm going to take this piece that eventually gets screwed down in there. Right now I'm just going to set that in place there and I'm going to clamp it. If I can sneak my hand in here. Like that. And then I can take this fabric and pull it over like that. And then I can see that I have I can see how much material I need to roll over that front edge. So I'm going to mark that. I also, and I'm just going to tape that down here real quick. Just going to pull that a little bit tight and just tape that down. Uh, let's see, I forgot to center that up. Making sure it's centered this way. I think that looks all right. And what I need to do now is mark out the curve of the window. So pull that down tight, mark out that curve, because that has to be folded around. And that has to be folded up. That has to get tucked under. So uh, I'm just going to tape off those curves, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Okay, so that line here, that's where the... Uh, top line of the side window is. So that's where the fabric has to be folded up under. So I'll probably take this dimension here, continue that straight across and down, and trim off that extra. It'll make it easier to fold that around. All of this back here gets tucked up under, like I did on the back. It's just hanging out for now, no big deal. And uh, that'll get folded up at that line as well. So, this is kind of the um, scary part, I guess, because once I cut that and glue and fold it, um, it's kind of the point of no return, I guess. If I completely screw it up, um, that means ordering new fabric and starting all over. Which, the thought of that, um, yeah, not good. So uh, I just gotta make sure that I do that right the first time. So I'll probably think about this for a little while before I actually do it, just to make sure I'm not overlooking something. And again, just making sure everything is straight and even, and I'll double check everything before I actually uh, cut and glue anything. So I'll get back with you once that part's done. All right, so here's one side um, trimmed, several layers of tape, so it's fairly stiff. And of course, a little hinge right there where the uh, tape seam meets. The back side I taped off where I will glue. 
I cut it a little thinner here just to help folding that over. Uh, that's going to be real difficult. Um, I'm not looking forward to that part, but uh, yeah, I cut it thinner just to help with that curve. And I'm going to try to use. I'm going to try to use this. It says it's good for um, cloth. Hopefully, this should be better than the spray adhesive. Now I am testing it. I've got a scrap piece of plastic, or plastic cloth here, and uh, I just spread some on. It did soak through, so yeah, that's no good. Can't use that, but um, yeah, that sucks that it did that. So yeah, won't be using that. I'll go back to the uh, spray adhesive, and I'll try to do a better job of getting a nice even coat, letting it set the recommended time and then try it. And if it starts peeling up, I'll just stitch it like I did the others. Uh, that would suck, but you know, I'll do what I have to do. So let me get that sprayed and fold it over and show you what it looks like. Well, there it is. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with it. That should sit down better once I get that front rolled around. Might have to iron the crease maybe, I don't know. Um, but it's pretty much right even with that. Kind of. I can pull it tighter back here a little bit. A little wrinklage here I gotta figure out, but that shouldn't be too hard. Um, but yeah, it's coming along pretty good, I think. So, uh, one thing I don't like is the gap right in here. But looking at other builds online, they all have that. The only way you could get rid of that is if you completely remade this window frame and completely remade that so it could shift back. See so if you can make that shift back a little bit and have that kind of shift forward a bit, but you'd have to remake both of those pieces. I've not seen anybody do that. So, I mean, even the model on the box art kind of shows that. Um, actually, does it? I think the box art shows the window down, which kind of makes you wonder why. But um, anyways, um, I think that's looking pretty good. There's the, the folded edge. And uh, let me tape that here. I just folded that up under there, and again, that's just tucked under, but uh, so that'll get folded up, and um, yeah, I think I think it's looking pretty good. So, look at that folded edge. That wasn't too bad doing that curve. That actually turned out better than I than I thought. So, yeah, do the same to the other side, and uh, one step closer. Okay, um, I think it's time to just bite the bullet and attach this to the frame because um, it has to be done eventually so might as well do it now this uh, it's been the next day since I glued this and it seems to be holding okay I, I was afraid it would start lifting up especially around here but uh, it seems to be holding all right so hopefully I won't have to stitch that because that would just suck um, so what I'm gonna do according to the directions this gets glued along here, and here, and here, and it wraps around that edge here. So, and then those three pieces here get trimmed off, clipped off. So, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and just put this on here, and I will clamp it in place where it needs to sit. Uh, so first thing, we'll put this back in place with this, again making sure that's centered. And to clamp it, I modified the clamp so that part goes on top, otherwise that would hit the fabric when I folded it over. So we'll just put that right in like there. fold that back over and then what I'm going to do is I want to pull that I want to center everything triple check everything and then I will clamp that I'll just use um, like these little uh, clamps like that to clamp that front uh, seam here and then I will take the whole thing off and put the car body away and then Get everything marked and positioned so yeah let me get this clamped and i'll get back with you as soon as this is off of the body here 
and uh, see what that looks like at that point. Alright, so basically, if you just center that up, now I did earlier, I marked here um, where that should sit. And again, you don't want it too far back because then you'll run out of material in the back over here. Um, so it'd be better to have it further forward than too far back. That gives you more to pull under that other piece here. Um, and I think this is as far forward as I want to go here. And that should give me plenty of material in the back and that gives me just enough to just enough to fold over here and then once that's folded over that piece will screw down clamping it in. I don't like this piece. Uh, when I look at the real car uh, that piece is kind of like a chrome trim that goes around there so uh, and plus this has big screws that hold that in which just I don't know it doesn't look too good in my opinion. So I'm still thinking about this. Um, I might do something different there. For now, what I could do is go ahead and mask all of this off and spray glue around here and just fold that up. And I might even use CA to fold that up, just a little bit of CA and then roll that around and that, that should lock that in. Um, I'll probably just use a spray glue. But I'll tape here, I'll tape here just so it doesn't shift around. Um, but pretty much these frames here they lie right on that sewn seam, so that makes it really easy to kind of line it up and get everything straight. So I'm going to tape this down so it can't move. I'll glue that edge, and then I'll worry about gluing these on later. I think I'm only going to glue it from here to here, from seam to seam. I'm not going to glue it on the sides. And I'm still trying to decide what glue I want to use for that. I'll probably just use spray adhesive, which means I'll just have to mask it off and use a spray adhesive. But uh, anyways, uh, one step at a time. We'll just go ahead and get that glued and fold it over. And then we'll jump on the back side there. Okay, I just finished masking off where the frame sections will go. And I just realized I missed a little, a few little pieces here. Um, but the areas that I left open are where the frames go. And uh, we'll do it. So this one is the middle one that I made. Um, again, remember I shortened it a bit, so I'm going to have to trim off that for the new hole. Same on that side, just got to trim that off. It actually fits with that mortar sticking out, but I'll, I'll cut that off. And that one goes there, and I have a little mark here for center line, and I have a mark on the tape for center line, so this will get spray adhesive. This will get spray adhesive from here to here, and uh, well then that'll stick on there. The back one, uh, I just put a little dot for center line, and uh, that sticks on right in there. The front one broke. That's in the process of being glued back together. So um, it was already cracked right in the middle. And um, so it broke, but um, shouldn't be that big of a deal. So obviously I'll cover the rest of this and I'll cover in here, spray adhesive. And again, I'll tape off here, spray adhesive, and then stick them on. And uh, that should be that. I'm almost tempted to remake those others because this one is like warped. Um, I mean, it's flexible enough. It can bend around and move around, so it should be fine. I could just put a heat gun on it and try to bend it back into shape, maybe. We'll see. I don't think it's that big a deal. I mean, once it's installed, it should be fine. But um, anyways, um, so yeah, I just got to finish gluing the other one together. So this is just like... You know anything else I've sprayed just spray it let it set for a couple minutes and uh, stick them on now once those are on the last piece to go in will be this and that will go in that's the opening for the window that actually lines up with that forward piece and the sewn seams and then that glitz gets glued in and um, the instructions say to fold to fold these edges over like three millimeters fold and glue them over I don't think I'm gonna do that because right now it goes from sewn seam to sewn seam and it actually fits very well the way it is if I fold it over it'll almost be too short and I'm afraid the thicker edges might 
interfere with it moving. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up now. But it's on the inside. Um, when I spray it and glue it in, that'll keep the edges from fraying. Uh, this piece will never really be seen that well because it is on the inside. So I'm not going to fold those over. I think it'll work better and look just as fine if I leave it as is. And plus, again, that edge, it goes right to the stitching to the stitching. So that'll just help keep the stitches in, maybe? I don't know. Again, I'm just making stuff up. Um, but let me get those glued in and uh, show you what it looks like after that. All right, so I've got the frame pieces in. And they are glued in. And next step, and I also masked off the window where I don't want to spray glue. Next step is to glue that in like that. Now, I don't want to glue this back flap down because according to the instructions that gets glued to a part of the car. So I'm going to leave that unglued. So I'll actually mask off here so I don't get any glue on that. Um, and I don't think I want to try it all in one go. So I might cover up that much just do the window and get that. That way I can get it positioned better and then do the rest and then roll it down onto the rest. I think I'll have a better chance of doing that. So, um, yeah, and again, it's just spraying and sticking. So I'll show you what it looks like when that part's done. All right, so here we are so far. Um, it's only glued in around here, like around where the window is, trapping the window in. Again, that is left loose. So that's left loose because uh, apparently that gets glued to the car. And uh, I left that loose just because I figured it'd be easier to stick that down instead of the whole thing. So go back to the spray glue and uh, spray that, let it set for a minute, and just roll that down into place. And then it should be done. Um, well, for now. Now technically, according to the instructions, you're not supposed to put that in until it's all installed on the car. Then they want you to go back in from the bottom and glue it up in from the bottom. For as tedious as this, tedious as this is, gluing it like here, this side up on the bench, yeah, I don't think I would have much luck doing it while it's installed on the car. Um, maybe you could, but uh, yeah, I, I think that's beyond me. So um, anyway, so yeah, I'll go ahead. Of course, I'll cover that up, spray that, roll it down, and uh, show you what that looks like. So that part is done, but there's a few issues. Uh, so let's, let's talk about some problems here. Um, there's three main problems. Two of them I expected. Uh, the third one I was hoping wouldn't happen, and that one you can actually see right here. When I first kind of just dry test fitted this extra piece um, by laying it over the window and just draping it over, it just covered, just covered this frame here. When I actually glued it on and pressed it down, it came short, so it pulled in a little bit. Um, but that is based on that being around that window. I mean, obviously, if I pulled that edge to over here, it wouldn't be over the window properly. So the reason why I lost that length is where the fabric went over those frame rails here. So um, to fix this issue, I have a couple of choices. Um, first and easiest choice is to just leave it and not worry about it. The problem with that is if you looked inside, you would see that black rail. So I could just paint it brown, but that would be kind of hokey. Um, I don't like that choice. So the only good choice is to find some matching fabric and just cut a single strip to go over top of that. Um, that would hide the black, but since it's inside the car, it wouldn't be that noticeable. It would be less noticeable than just that being black. So I'm going to, some point, take a trip to the uh, fabric shop, fabric store, craft store, whatever, see if I can find some fabric that matches this, because I don't have any scrap material left over. I thought I did. I thought I saved some scrap, and I've been searching around, and I, I can't find any more scrap material left. The only piece I have left is this, and that's not enough to do anything with. Um, plus, it's got that's what I use to test different glues, so it's got glue all over it. Um, so I just got to find some material to, to match. If I can't find any material that perfectly matches, uh, I guess I'll just I'll just leave it. Um, I don't know yet. I've, I've got to think about that some more. Um, the other issues that I knew 
were going to be potential issues is for one when you flip this over you can see the uh, the frames again these three frames that are here you can see those through the fabric and before I glued anything down I knew that if I glued these down and glued that fabric on then you would see the frames on the back side uh, that was just I just assumed you would see that so that didn't surprise me um, I don't really I don't think I like it um, but yet when I look at other cars on the road looking at pictures of real cars looking at cars on the road that have soft top convertibles you can see the frames you can you can see the lines where the frames are internally and some are more noticeable than others so it's not unrealistic you know what I mean it's it's not I don't think it's bad it's just me being super nitpicky I think um, maybe you think it looks bad too but realistically speaking I think it's actually realistic to see that um, now when you are laying this inside fabric down you got to make sure that um, for example let's say this is the top fabric here and you've got the frame rail here when you glue the other fabric down you need to make sure that the other layer of fabric gets tucked up here and around and down this way as you can kind of see on this one how it's really curved around if you don't do it that way here you'll see that here way worse you know what I mean so to minimize that here you got to make sure that you get the bulk of it here hopefully that makes sense um, now the center one is the one that I made and it's flatter than that so uh, it laid in a little bit differently but um, again I think I'm just being too critical I'm too nitpicky it's probably fine um, I don't think anybody's going to see that and, and complain about it. Uh, the other thing, the other issue, this uh, the third thing here, is something that I, I think I thought would happen, but I was kind of hoping it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And that is when you glue two pieces of fabric together, that area gets a lot stiffer. So you see how floppy this is here. This area is a lot stiffer. What's going to happen is when we fold this back, it's going to be a little stiffer. I mean, it's still fold. It's not that big of a deal. It'll still fold back like that. It's fine. Um, but it's just a little stiffer than here. Again, it's not that big of a deal. The biggest problem, though, which, again, I guess is a fourth issue. So the fourth problem here, um, and again, this I knew for a fact. I knew this would happen, is the fact that when this is all together, so these three come together like that, when this is all together, we have support frames here holding that up and this is being held up by the windshield frame there's no support in here so that's just going to fall flat so when you look at this on the car it's just going to fall flat there's no structure kind of giving that any shape or support and when you look at pictures of other poacher models online most pictures most pictures are shown with this folded back the pictures that show it closed or open is it open or closed what's the correct term when it's when it's on you know unfolded on like there's a roof most pictures that show it like this the roof just kind of falls flat now there are a few pictures that have a nicely shaped roof and i think what happens there is when you're making this you have a choice uh, you can make it to where it's always open all the time or always folded back all the time or make it to where you could go back or forth. If you make it to where it's always open all the time, then what you could do is just leave those pieces in there. That's not the right one. Um, leave those pieces in there like that. All right? There's three of these pieces that go in there. I'm missing another one. Um, yeah, we'll just yeah, maybe it was that one. Yeah, that's one. So if you leave those three pieces in, that will give this full shape and support. And then you could just leave it like that all the time and just never fold it back. Of course, then it's harder to you know see the interior. But I think some people 
build it like that. And that's definitely a legitimate option. If you if you just want to display it with it with it like that all the time, that would be fine. Um, of course, then you can't fold it back. Now, I also said you can make it towards folded back all the time and just leave it like that. You could do that if you screwed up the uh, if you screwed up the edge here, if you screwed up the stitching, if you screwed it up, um, you could just leave it folded back all the time and then nobody would notice the screw up. You know what I mean? Um, now, since I'm building this for my friend, my neighbor across the street, I am assuming he's going to leave this just folded back all the time. So I'm assuming he's gonna put it on display with it folded back so you can see the interior much nicer. And, uh, but I want him to have the option of opening it up so he could show it off or whatever. I don't want to give it to him and say, don't open it up, looks like crap, so leave it folded back all the time. So I'm doing my best to make sure that it can both be displayed open and closed and look nice either way. That, that's my goal is to have it look nice either way. Um, obviously when it's folded all back, you won't see this. And even when it's open, you'll only see that if you look up into the door and you look up at it. So it's not going to be that noticeable. So if I can't find any fabric that matches this to cover that up, I'll probably just leave it. But one problem with that is if it came unglued, then it would be flopping around and it could be problematic. And another piece of fabric over that will just kind of help hold that in place. So anyways, um, now one other thought I'm, I'm having here is when it's open, to give a nice shape when it's open is I'm thinking about getting some craft foam, that thin, that thin craft foam, and cutting out this basic shape. So when it's open, I'll tuck it up in under here. So it'll be tucked up under here and then wedged up back here. And that will hold that roof up and give a nice shape to the roof. I'm going to try that. And that'll be a removable piece. So when he folds it back, he just pulls that piece out and puts it away somewhere. Um, so that's my plan for that. My plan for here, um, right now, what I'm going to do is I will airbrush that like silver or chrome or something and I'll go ahead and screw it on here. Um, what I might also do is cut a piece out of brass and tin plate it and polish it up to look like chrome and just glue that on here. So I may do that and if it looks like crap then I'll do that. So we'll just kind of see how that goes. As far as this goes, for now, this is done until the car is wet sanded and polished. Um, again, ignoring this and this. Um, I'll work on those later. My next step now is to wet sand and polish the car, and then this can go on the car permanent for good. But I can't really do too much more with, I mean, this, this is as far as I can go until the car is wet sanded and polished. So I'm going to end this video here. And again, I just don't like the fact that this just flops. There's no structure here. I'm sure the real car has more framework and structure here. But to build something here that can fold back, um, I'm sure it's doable. I'm sure it's possible. Um, you know, if I was building this for a customer who was paying me two grand to make it work, I, I would make it work. But, um, you know, I... I I think it would be um, a little a little much to try that here now. Um, but uh, I don't know, it's an idea though, it's an idea. But uh, just to give some, some support and structure here. But it's a poacher model, I mean, all of these problems I'm having can be summed up as it's a poacher model. I think being a poacher model, this is probably perfectly acceptable for a poacher model. Um, I've seen pictures online of people who did a fantastic job making this thing. It looks really nice. But I've seen plenty of others that, um, that um, well, I'll just leave it at that. So I think it's good. I'm happy with it. If I was completely unhappy with it, I would buy more fabric and try again, maybe. Man, the thought of that just sucks. But I think it looks fine. Let me know what you think. You know, put in the comments if you think it looks okay or not. Give me your honest opinion on uh, how you think it looks so far. Um, but uh, again, I'm sure he's just going to have it all folded back all the time. And uh, 
but uh, it'll just be nice to give him the option of opening up if he wants to. Again, that'll be pulled tight. A lot of these will be pulled tighter. I'm going to stop rambling on this. Um, there's no way of knowing exactly what it'll really look like until it's actually on the car and everything pulled tight and secured down. But again, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine here. Uh, so anyways, what I want to say. Um, I'm going to end this video here because it's it's getting to be rather long. Hopefully this was helpful and, and uh, for somebody. And um, when I get back to you on the next video, I'll be working on wet sanding and polishing and putting all of the um, chrome pieces on. I still have to paint these pieces here, but I'll be working on putting all these little chrome pieces on. Uh, I have to make the little straps here that go around. Uh, I think there's another page. That go. Nah. Well, yeah, see, look, even a photo art here, it just shows it all folded back. But there's leather straps that go around there to hold that back, so I gotta make those leather straps. Um, I still need to wet sand and polish the fenders here. They're painted, they just need wet sanded and polished and start working on all the little chrome pieces that go on that. And, um,. And yeah, I mean, it's getting uh, it's getting pretty close. We're getting close. Hopefully I have this done in a few months. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm going to stop rambling. So um, as always, until next time, thanks for watching.